Welcome to our first video on website scraping here on the YouTube channel and or website if you are watching it from our website article. Uh, well, this is the first video in a playlist that I'm going to be developing specifically for scraping websites. This series, I don't know exactly how far it's going to be, 10, 20, 30 videos, but I'm going to be teaching you a lot, publishing about two videos every single week around it. Uh, this first video, we're going to be covering specifically some of the information you should know before jumping into scraping, such as the robots.txt file, rate limits, headers, and more. And then we're, after this video, we're going to start jumping into real examples of scraping websites. First few videos are going to be focused around beautiful soup, and then we're going to expand upon other libraries. And we're also going to be taking a look how to leverage large language models even later in this series. That's something that I've been using recently. Uh, super excited to build out this series for you guys. It's been requested a ton, and I take on freelance projects for website scraping. So if you guys do need to have any help with website scraping, feel free to hit me up down below on my email or on Discord. But with that out of the way, let's jump into our first video. All right, guys, let's start with a few different imports over here. So we're going to start with import requests. I'm going to say from lib parse import URL join. And then lastly, import lib.robot parser. parser. And uh, it should be LL on this. I apologize over there. And all these are good to go. So let's start off with the basic side of things, right? This is part one, getting your first page. Uh, we're just going to write a very basic function over here. So we're going to say def over here, response code, response code, and then pass in response over here. Now, you don't have to be a great coder to essentially scrape websites, but you should at least know the basics of Python. I have a ton of videos here on the channel teaching you the basics of Python. So uh, what I would recommend, learn a bit of the basics of scraping, jump into the Python series, and come back and forth, right? Um, because you will need to have that skill set. But regardless, what we're going to do is a basic if else in here. So we're going to say response dot status code equals 200. 100. We're going to print out print page fetched successfully. And we're going to say else print failed to retrieve page. And we're going to actually print out the response code. So we'll say response dot status code. Now, even if a website is live, it doesn't guarantee that we get a 200 code um, because a lot of websites try to block scraping. And that is going to be something I teach you guys as we build out this tutorial series, different ways to approach websites that try to block you. All right. So we have this over here. Let's test a few different sites. Now, the first website we're going to be testing out, and we're actually going to use it a bit early in the series, is called Books to Scrape. So what we're going to do is say HTTP books to scrape books uh, to scrape.com I believe it's just a HTTP website not H actually it should be to HTTPS let me just double check and I'll show you guys the website over here it actually is not secure so it is HTTP um, but this is a website someone built like just for testing scraping uh, so I'm gonna put that over here scraping other websites can be iffy at times, especially making a public facing tutorial. So, um, you know, probably not the best to do it all the time. So what you'll see on here, if I go, I have this URL, right? And what I'll do is say URL response, URL response equals request dot get, and then pass in URL, right? So we have that over here and awesome. And then what we're going to do is go to response code and pass in this URL response, right? And you'll see page fetched successfully. Again, they want to be scraped. It's perfectly okay. And just to show you the URL response, it's going to tell us we have a 200, right? Which we are good to go. We can scrape that website. Um, we aren't getting blocked. 
Now let's take a look at a failure to retrieve a page a 403. So I want to show you two different websites that I've worked with that have 403s, right? Um, so essentially there's a lot of different ways around this, but uh, what we're going to take a look at is just basic 403s across the board. So first we're going to start off with URL two, uh, like this, and we're going to grab baseball reference. So I was actually going to look at possibly using baseball reference in a video in the scraping series. Um, so baseballreference.com, right? And I believe this is Itro Suzuki's page. I'll just double check on that one. We'll just go over here and see. Yeah, so this was Itro Suzuki, a famous Japanese and American baseball player. Um, so let's take a look at that. So that is our URL too. And again, we're just gonna go through uh, the same process that we have, right? So URL response for response.get. This time we're gonna put URL too, right? And then what we're gonna do is get a response code. So we'll just go over here and say response code. And we'll pass in, and this should have been URL response too. I, I apologize for not putting that in over here. Um, actually, another underscore. Well, make sure to obviously take a look at the article because they'll have the most up-to-date code. Uh, yeah, that should be fine over here. And you'll see it says failed to retrieve page 403. Uh, same exact thing on this side of things, right? And it's actually quite common out of the gate to get 403 on this side of things. So this was a website um, that I worked with a customer before. Now I'm not gonna show you how to scrape this website, but I had a real estate customer and this was a, a great example on the side of things, right? So if I go over here and just go to URL three, so URL three equals, and we'll just pass in this website on the side of things. You'll see this also gets a 403, right? that in over here i'll put three and three and real estate is such a common niche which people want data uh, scraped because they want to try to flip properties and things like that um so we have your all three your all three and you'll see again failed to retrieve page and you know this website is publicly available as well if you go over here right it's verifying that you are human with Cloudflare, which is the reason why this one specifically stops. Um, again, there's ways to go around this. We'll show you a little bit later in this tutorial series. Um, but yeah, you can see on the side of things for real estate, uh, the Cloudflare thing will block if you're just going straight up and trying to get this request. So there's approaches we'll take a little bit later in this series, which will go around that. In fact, a little bit later in the video, I do believe we go through uh, one of these two websites and show you how to actually still get that uh, 200 response, but uh, that will be a little bit later. Okay, let me also show you an example of a 404. So 404 means something doesn't exist. So page doesn't exist. And these are gonna be the three codes that you're most likely gonna get. There's actually other codes out there as well. Um, but yeah, so check this out. Uh, imagine I had a URL on this side. I should say exist, a URL like this. So this should be URL four. Uh, but ryanmattdatascience.com slash 100 miles. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you know I run long distance, I've run a 100 miler before, but uh, regardless, I don't have a page on the website for 100 milers. And you can see if I go over here and type in slash 100 miles, uh, we're gonna get a 404 page not found, right? So this does not exist. So with that in mind, let's just see what the response code is. We're gonna do URL four. Again, it's like the same thing over and over again, right? We'll just go over here and grab this, and go through it, and you'll see it's gonna get that 404. Right, so you're all four. That. And you'll see, failed to retrieve page 404. So there's that side of things. Okay, uh, the next concept that we should cover is a robots.txt file. So. And this is probably one of the first things you want to check on a website. So example two, uh, checking the robots.txt file. And essentially what the robots.txt file tells you is you can find some rate limits in there, but it also tells you what parts of the website you are not allowed to scrape, right? So let's talk about ways that you could approach this. And there's a few different approaches to taking a look at a robots.txt file. 
We're just gonna grab it on this first example. We'll expand upon it a little bit later. So again, just write a basic function. We're gonna call it def check robots. We're gonna pass in our URL. So URL like that. Okay. And we're gonna say robots URL equals URL join. We'll have our URL. And then we're gonna say robots.txt. Text. We're going to say response equals requests get robots URL. And then we're going to print out the response text. Print response text. Like that. And what this will allow us to do is check different robots.txt files of websites. So one website that, again, people always want to scrape and I see this talked about all the time is Amazon. So people want to see what products cost on there. So we'll say HTTPS www.amazon.com. And you can see that this is the robots.txt file, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do now is just go check out the robots.txt file on Amazon. So you can see amazon.com slash robots.txt. And this is the robots.txt file, right? And again, that is what we have printed out on this side of things, right? All right, and one last thing to mention with this side of things for disallow, right? If you do scrape the disallow pages on here, you can get blocked and it's considered unethical. And additionally on Amazon, right? It doesn't mention it, but on some robots.txt file, you'll see that they have a crawl delay on the website itself. So we can go through that and you'll just see it as crawl dash delay, um, and that'll be under here past the user agent, right? And that means essentially how much time you should wait before bot requests. Um, okay, so we're gonna look at some delay requests now with our third example, right? Um, so we're gonna say example three, example three, look for delay. And essentially what we're gonna do is just pass in Amazon again. Now, Amazon does not have a delay, so we'll see that it says no delay, uh, but we can also test other sites as well. So we're gonna say RP equals your LLIB.robot parser dot robot file parser like this. Then we're gonna go over here and say RP dot set URL and pass in website HTTPS. Well, I guess I could have just grabbed Amazon above, right? Go down over here, paste that in on that side of things, right? And then what we'll do is say rp.read. Okay. And we'll put in the delay. So delay equals rp.crawl underscore delay. Pass that in over here. And we're just looking for delay, right? And then we can just print our delay if there is a delay in the file. So delay and file, I meant the robots.txt file. And you can see that there's no delay on Amazon. That is not the case for every website, right? Some websites will tell you that there is gonna be a specific delay associated with it. But just for the Amazon example, since I did show that above, right? We have confirmed that there is no delay in the file, okay? Um, again, we can also look at specifically if uh, we can scrape a certain page. So that's going to be through example four. So example four robots.txt to see if we can scrape a page. And what we're going to do is use Amazon again on this side of things. So we're going to say RP equals. And again, the same information that we have over here. So technically didn't need to copy it over, but um, let's just say we're starting from scratch. Again, the same thing with the set URL, right? So we have our robots.txt file and same as above, we're gonna read it. So same exact code. I know it's repetitive, but pretend like one use case, we're just looking at scraping a page. With another use case, we're looking at crawling, right? So I'm just gonna throw this text in over here. All right, so what we can do now is print out if we can read a page or not. So what we're gonna say is print, we can say rp.canfetch. Inside over here, we'll put star, and then we're gonna put in the URL. Now, the URL that I'm using over here is just for Celsius drinks. 
I drink Celsius every morning uh, because that is my energy drink. I don't like coffee, so I drink a Celsius uh, and I put that in a water bottle. So this is uh, some Celsius drinks over here, this extremely long URL. And you can see it says true, like you can scrape that specific URL. All right, so let's jump into example five, which is headers. So this is one approach that we could use to bypass some of the different errors that we get. Uh, and a little bit later in the, not this video, but another video, we'll talk about rotating headers as well. So again, we'll just start off with a basic example with books to scrape. Uh, and on the next side of things, what we'll do is pass in our headers. Now, there are a ton of headers that we could try that are online. And one of the methods with rotating headers is you try each header to see what works with the website if it keeps throwing you out. Um, this is a common one over here with Mozilla Firefox, right? So you have this information on here for headers. And again, these are all Googleable. You can just go online and search it. You could also ask like a chat GPT or perplexity, right? Give me some headers and they will give you some examples to test. So we have our URL, we have our headers over here. And now what we're gonna do is our similar request. So we can say request.get pass in our URL, and then also pass in headers. So we're gonna say headers equals headers like this, right? And you'll see that we get a response code of 200. Let's try one more website. Um, so we're gonna do ultra sign up over here. So we'll just have ultra sign up like this. And then we'll just try a different header on this side of things. So I will grab that, this one over here headers, right? Actually, I think this might be, no, this is a little bit different one, right? Apple Safari, we have that on here for our headers. And then lastly, just grab this, need the response, and you'll see we get a 200 code. So yeah, that is the very bare bone basics, right? We'll expand upon this with other videos, but essentially, right, we want, when we try to get our website, we're looking for a status code. We want to have 200. That means we can start scraping the website. Additionally, what you, what you want to look at is specifically your robots.txt file. What it can tell you is what pages you're not allowed to scrape on a website, what pages you are allowed to scrape. Additionally, right, and it's going to tell you if there's going to be any delays that you need to set up. The reason why it's so important, if you don't set up that delay correctly, when you talk about going over different pages, right, you might get blocked. And we'll cover that a little bit later on in this video, how to simulate real users, how to set up delays when you're going page to page, right? You don't wanna just constantly hit a website. You're gonna have to set some sort of delay associated with it. And sometimes websites will tell you that delay. So we've talked about how you can just find that delay really easily. Additionally, right, how we could easily find out if a page is scrapable or not, we built out this on here, the RP can fetch, right? Just pass in a URL. And last time we talked about headers and how we could change the header if we're getting some issues uh, getting into the website. Again, that's only one approach. We'll cover a lot more a little bit later. But yeah, I think this is a good introduction into this series. Thanks for watching this video. And uh, let's get moving forward with more scraping tutorials. Thanks guys for checking out this video on website scraping. And if you find it valuable, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be publishing a lot more later on for this playlist. Down below, you'll find links to our Discord server as well as the website with the code and my contact information if you wanna have any freelance type projects with website scraping. If you wanna continue this playlist though, that is gonna be right over here.